Hi, this unit is choose the right automation tool and the lightning flow uh, module in the uh, admin intermediate trail. My name is Jeff O'Hadiff. You're welcome to join with me as I work my way through this unit. If I come across anything interesting that I think might help you out, um, I'll link to it in the description below so you can jump right to it. Um, if not, you could listen along while I work my way through this unit. After completing this unit, you will be able to list the tools included in Lightning Flow, describe the tools available for automation, automating guided visual experiences. Okay, I don't know what that means. And describe and compare the tools available for behind the scenes automation. I don't know what that means. And describe the tools available for approval automation. So it looks like we have tools for automating guided visual experiences, behind-the-scenes automation, and approval automation. And we'll be able to describe them for this one and this one, and we'll be able to compare the tools for this one. Okay, I might be reading too much into these learning objectives. I sometimes do that. People expect automation, no matter where they're buying movie tickets, no, no matter whether they are buying movie tickets, paying bills, or changing restaurant reservations. If a customer is interacting with a company, they expect a seamless, personalized experience. I would just like to point out that seamless literally means without a seam. So like if you're buying a garment, you would not expect the seam to show. That's what it really means. But Yet this piece of business jargon makes its way into our learning, which is okay. It's there. It's what people say, so we'll move on. For example, when a customer needs to replace her credit card, the average service agent needs to know a bunch of things. Is it damaged, lost, or stolen? If it's stolen, is she worried about recent transactions? Where should we send the new card? Serving a customer in this situation, gathering and maintaining related data can involve separate systems with varying degrees of complexity. Automation used to be hard. Providing a seamless automated customer experience has historically been challenging, time-consuming, and code-heavy. Depending on the precise nature of your business processes, you may have had to integrate various systems, configure process logic, I don't know what configuring process logic means. Design and build an end user experience. Make the experience available from anywhere, desktop or mobile devices, internal apps, or external portals. Okay. Meet Lightning Flow. Lightning Flow provides declarative processes automation for every Salesforce app, experience, and portal. I don't know what declarative process automation means. I don't know what that means. Included in Lightning Flow are two point-and-click automation tools, Process Builder, which lets you build processes, and Flow Builder, which lets you build flows. Okay, to sum up the difference, Lightning Flow is the name of the product, Process Builder and Flow Builder are the names of the tools. Use Process Builder to make processes. Use Flow Builder to make flows. <laughs> What's the difference between a process and a flow? I don't know. And I'm in the library, so I'm whispering. Later we talk about when to use each tool, but for now here's a sneak peek at what business process look like in each tool. This is Process Builder. So you start, you have an opportunity, close one, true, false. This is close one and high value. I don't know what the difference is between a process and a flow. This one uses orange and pink and light green. 
And this one <laughs> is blue and gray and white. I'm totally missing the point here. Okay. <laughs> With these two tools, Lightning Flow makes it easy for you to do the following. Wait, Lightning Flow includes Process Builder and Flow Builder. Use cases. Create a guided tutorial or wizard. Oh, wizards. Wingardium Leviosa. Create a guided tutorial wizard with screens. Flow Builder includes several out-of-the-box screen components like text boxes, radio buttons, and file uploads. I'd like to say that out-of-the-box stuff doesn't come out of a box. Software doesn't get shipped in boxes anymore. Okay. Flow Builder includes several out-of-the-box screen components like text boxes, radio buttons, and file uploads. If you need more than what's offered, add custom aura components to your screen. I don't know what custom aura components are. Okay. Set up automated tasks and processes. Declaratively configure logic. That isn't English in my book. Configure logic? Is logic configurable? Oh, gosh. And actions for your business process with either Process Builder or Flow Builder. If needed, you can build custom Apex code to fill any functional gaps. Connect to external systems. Communicate changes between your Salesforce org and external systems with platform events. That's stuff that happens on a diving board. Platform events. <laughs> Process Builder and Flow Builder let you respond to and send platform event messages. Hey, look, I did a cannonball. In addition, Flow Builder can retrieve data from third-party systems with external services. Okay. Add automation into your pages and apps. Make sure your behind-the-scenes processes start when the right action happens, whether that's when records change or when users click a particular button. Once you build guided visual experiences, add them to lightning pages, community pages, the utility bar in your lightning app, and more. Okay, build them and then add them to pages. Reuse what you build in Flow Builder. Any flow can be used as a subflow. In Process Builder, create invocable process to reuse that process logic or actions and other business processes. I have to say, I am completely confused. Lightning Flow, Process Builder, Flow Builder. This naming convention is weird also. Why, what are called Lightning Flow, and then you have Flow Builder. But there's also Process Builder, but both of them are tools. I don't understand how they're different. I write use cases. It would be so helpful if this table included which one we were talking about. This is Flow Builder. This is Process Builder or Flow Builder. This is Process Builder and Flow Builder. This one doesn't say what this is. It's not here. I don't know if this is process or flow builder. And this is flow builder and process builder. Which automation tool is right for my use case? When it's all said and done, a process driven experience isn't backed by only one process, it's a combination of all the business processes in your org that can impact your customer. Each business process typically falls into one of these camps. Ah, here. Available tools. That's helpful. Guided visual experience. Business processes that need input from users, whether they're employees or customers. That's for Flow Builder. That's this. 
behind the scenes automation, business processes that get all the necessary data from your Salesforce org to a connected system. In other words, user input isn't needed. And you can do that with any one of these. And Apex. Why are we introducing Apex here? What's Apex? Apex Legends. It's a video game. Developer guy. There we go. Apex is a strongly typed object oriented programming language. Strongly typed. You have to press very firm on those keys. My goodness gracious. I'm so confused. It allows developers to execute flow die flow and transaction control statements on Salesforce service in conjunction with calls to the API using syntax that looks like Java and acts like a database stored procedures. Looks like Java that acts like database stored procedures. Apex enables developers to add business logic to most system events including bottom clicks, related record updates, and visual force pages. Apex code can be issued by web service requests from and from trigger on objects. Triggers on objects. Okay, I'm confused. That's some sort of programming language. From process to flows to Apex. One of the hardest things for admin or developer to figure out is when to use what tool for the job at hand. In general, it's best to start with declarative no code tools and work your way up to code solutions. Okay, that makes sense. Process Builder. Use Process Builder when you need to start a behind the scenes business process automatically. Processes can start when a record is created, a record is updated, a platform event occurs. Flow Builder. Use Flow Builder to automate a guided visual experience, add more functionality for behind the scenes process than is available in the process builder, use flow builder to build the more complex functionality then call the resulting flow from the process. Start a behind the scenes business process where a user clicks something like a button. For example, when an opportunity is won, your company wants a renewal opportunity to be created automatically. As you see later in this module, you can build parts of that use case as a process for the rest as you build it in a flow. Okay, so you're going to use these two tools together. Use Apex when you need more functionality that is available in Process Builder or Flow Builder. Build the more complex functionality as an invocable, as invocable app, yeah, Apex methods. Then call the result of Apex invocable. What is invocable Apex methods?
Hmm. This looks inviting. Use the invocable method annotation to identify methods that can be run as invocable actions. Invocable methods are called with the REST API and used to invoke a single Apex method. Invocable methods have dynamic input and output values and support described calls. Describe calls. Okay. I think I need to learn some more. Now let's see these principles in practice with a few sample scenarios. Get a with community member through restricting requesting a new credit card with a step by step wizard. Flow builder. What you build, a flow. A sales rep clicks a button on an opportunity which launches a discount calculator. Flow builder flow. When an account is updated, update all of the contacts related to the account. That's a process builder. Process. When an opportunity stage is updated, also update custom checkbox field. Process builder process. Create a task when a platform event occurs. Update a lead record in Salesforce after a certain amount of time passes or when a specified time is reached. When opportunity closes, automatically create a new renewal opportunity. Run employee's time off request to a manager for approval. Wait. Uh, approvals. Approval process. There's something else. Wait, what's an approval process? Surprise, there's not another two on there. Yeah, there's three. No, there's four. They're propagating. We sent a tool in here. Approvals isn't included in the lightning flow, but it offers a declarative way to automate something that lightning flow doesn't cover. That said, lightning flow does support automating how a record gets submitted for approval. You learn more about approvals later in this module. What about workflow rules? If you're not using workflow, you should check out the process builder and flow builder first. There are more features and you can do more things, plus flow builder includes all new functionality for behind the scenes automation. You can learn more about workflow by visiting Salesforce help. <laughs> Pause as well. I try doing the quiz. I got confused with the approvals one. Um, there's a question in there about requiring approvals, and approvals is one of the flows. So at the end of the day, you're left with Lightning Flow has Flow Builder, Process Builder, Apex, and approvals, and there's also workflows, and that's just at the start, so hopefully this makes more sense as we keep going. Thanks for watching.